I had a question for you, Ralph, too, in, in regard to fatalities and uh, drinking in college. Because it seems like they're, when students attend college, oftentimes they don't have access to a vehicle. Is, have there been studies that have tried to identify what, um, what the rates of fatalities are due to alcohol for college students versus other peers of that it, same It sounds age. like you've been hearing me. When I'm in, back in Washington, I've, I've gone over to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration many times and implored them to get college identifiers. And that doesn't have to be which particular school, but just whether or not people who die in crashes are college students or not. Mm -hmm. um, because our estimates of how many alcohol-related unintentional injury deaths are based on a series of assumptions. Uh, they're based on the assumptions that the college students are dying proportionate to their proportion of the population uh, of the, that are college age. Uh, and we do that because we, when we look at, at national surveys, the uh, college students in, in, have traditionally been more likely to, to engage in binge drinking than, this, than those who are not in college. However, that, is, that difference is narrow. And, and one reason is, is good reason, because college binge drinking is coming down a little bit in the last uh, uh, five or 10 years. Uh, but unfortunately, among 18 to 24-year-olds who are not in college, the reverse is happening. It's, it's going up. So the, the, two, uh, the two lines are, are now converging. That's why I think it's so important that we not just look at this as a college problem. This is a community problem. And it's not just college age. It's all ages uh, that we have to uh, uh, encourage not to exceed those low-risk uh, drinking limits that, that uh, we uh, heard about. Uh, you know, if you, if you have, uh, we have a, on our website uh, a, uh, uh, a program called Rethinking Drinking, where we have established uh, through the best epi epidemiologic data that, that we've had um, the, uh, the, the limits. And it's no more than four drinks in a day for a man, uh, no more than three drinks in a day for a woman, no more than 14 drinks a week for a man, and no more than seven per week for a woman. After one exceeds those levels, now let's, by the way, those levels uh, don't apply to people who are under 21 or, or pregnant or taking uh, medicines where alcohol is contra contraindicated or frail elderly uh, people, people operating uh, machinery. Now, they're generally for healthy uh, adults. But uh, once one starts getting above those levels, that's when the cardiovascular uh, disease rates go up, and the cancer rates, and several other that were listed on the slides. Uh, so there, I think that there, you know, there is a, a level which people can drink, and there's probably a low risk of harm. But once you get those cutoffs that uh, uh, were mentioned uh, just a, a couple of minutes ago, that's, that's when the risks start to kick in. Just a, do you have an example of something that's been going on within the community that you could highlight for all of us that is a positive or a challenge in Amherst or, or <laughs> I guess I'll start. Um, so my involvement in all this really started, like I said, mostly with um, Blarney blowout, and that is an issue that's really multifaceted and brings in the community a lot um, into the conversation, and mostly in the respect to find out the big, the large divide that exists between the community and between UMass Amherst, um, and mostly between, I found, the undergraduate students and the community. Um, there's a very large, not only age divide and you know where you are in your life sort of divide versus people who have families and consistent jobs who are adults versus um, students who are 18 to 24 and are at the stage of their life where they're very independent and have much different things on their mind. Um, but also just in the way that they do handle alcohol and alcohol related events. So um, I think that the biggest challenge that I've run into is the fact that people come into these conversations with a mindset with these barriers already in place and I've had trouble breaking those barriers down and I have had some success with certain people M myself I am a success in that people have broken my own barriers down as a student but that is one issue that I've come across I think we're going to pass the buck all the way down the table 
Is that how it's going to go? Um, so I, I think one thing that's been successful in, in this community has been the sustained attention to it, um, although I, I feel like in the last year or so, um, Barney Boa brought it right back into our realization after many years of uh, having some pretty good successes, is that we've sustained and we've stuck with it. Um, alcohol abuse in, in the United States and with college populations is a major public health issue. It isn't one that we're going to fix and it's going to go away. It takes sustained initiatives. It takes people coming to the table. Even when it feels like uh, it isn't getting better, oftentimes it is. Our rates on the campus, our rates of binge drinking are down. Our rates of frequent binge drinking are down. Um, community impact, noise, nuisance house violations are down by 50% in the last year, in part because of some of the work that we've done with our neighborhood specific interventions. So we are improving things on the community level. I think on the flip side, what makes it hard is because of media, because of social media, when something happens, it can happen very, very quickly. So what couldn't happen, you know, in the 80s or 90s is a thousand people can't gather in a field in 15 minutes. Now it can happen. And it can also happen that it's perpetuated across the world via Twitter. So by the time the news office or our university relations are out trying to tell the story, the story's already been told. And we always know that once the story is told, even if it's wrong, to get the correct story out is even more difficult. So I think that's, that's probably our, our biggest challenge at the moment is we as a community can own this issue and we have great students that are on board trying to change the culture and try to be good community members, but we have all the people that are following that social media or looking to cause disturbances and they're looking for a destination. They want to be on TV, they want to be on social media, they want to make their video companies find a rage and barstool sports, they're making money off it. Um, and, and we're the target destination. So how do we impact that? I don't know. One thing I'd like to say, and I'm delighted that there's some law enforcement officers here. And uh, I think that the, the role that you play is it, it, it's critical, and uh, particularly in the uh, area of drinking and driving. Um, but I was struck, uh, being a, a native of Boston, uh, after the uh, marathon bombing took place, how uh, the, the citizenry of our city were so supportive of law enforcement and what they do. That, that it was a sea change from when I grew up in the Vietnam War era. Uh, and so I want to congratulate you for what you do and how you, how you help to keep this, uh, this problem under control. Thank you. I am someone who really loves positive things, um, so I think to highlight the services that are University Health Services and the feedback I've heard about um, the basics program in particular uh, has been incredibly positive. Um, just hearsay feedback from students that I've interacted with who have gone through the basics program um, have come out with great things to say, which is an, an awesome thing from my perspective, and I think everyone would agree with that, um, to have that being um, the feeling towards that basics program. So that's, you know, talking with individuals about their own alcohol use, and so for college students to come out with a more positive um, perspective about that program can help shift social norms in the conversation about alcohol. So I think that is something um, within this community of UMass that has been incredibly positive during my time here. I'm just going to say one thing because I know someone else has a question, but um, in 2000, I've been doing this work for a while, and in 2002, NIAAA came out with um, a call to action for um, campuses and communities across the country, and a big part of that was moving away from individual approaches, um, that education alone doesn't work, and that impacting the environment um, is what really creates sustained change. Um, and around that time, 2004, 2005, um, this campus did implement a campus and community coalition. Um, Officer Archibald and Ar Ar Officer O'Donnell um, were part of that from the beginning, as well as many other people in this room. Stephanie O'Keefe is a um, member of the select board chair. Um, Michael Weisman is um, director of fraternities and sororities, and I'm sure there are others that I might miss, so excuse me. But um, that effort of bringing multiple stakeholders to the table has been profoundly effective here and has been shown in literature to also be the really only way to make sustained change um, in this kind of environment. Um, 
Um, do you think that knowing the chances of another Barney blowout or similar event are pretty high, that some of the negative outcomes could be combated by the university sort of taking reins on that, much like they do with, much like they did with the tailgate a couple weeks ago? And what are your opinions on that? Um, I, I guess I'll take that one. This is not, <laughs> not a leap at the table here. Um, I think I think absolutely there are conversations that have been having uh, that have been having had since after Barney blowout and when the Boston Police Commissioner's report came out and that are ongoing to this day. Um, one of the programs that we're going to try as a pilot program for the spring is a new initiative called Minute Marshals, which is working with Student Government Association and Student Affairs to employ a group of students um, who'll be trained as sort of core team leaders to go out to large scale events and sort of um, marshal, if you will, so sort of set some expectations and help try to set the tone and prevent things um, from getting to a large-scale disturbance um, issue. I mean, I think we all look at that date with dread. A lot of us, even students who maybe think, oh wow, it's going to be great, I think there's, there's a mixed feeling there in terms of this could be really detrimental for um, relations and just for how people talk about our school. I mean, I know a lot of students who've said, you know, it's Barney Blowout was just a day, but now everybody thinks UMass is a big drinking school, and it isn't. So I think that, that we are working together to try, try to address the issue, and I think you know, the university taking the reins, I think what I've heard again from, from Ralph Finkson is that the university can't take the reins. It's a community issue, so we all need to take the reins on this. Um, it isn't the university can't control it um, any more than students themselves can control it. But working together, we can make community change in a positive way.